This is the fruit bunch from an oil palm tree. It's very heavy, by the way, and it's worth about $10. And these are the actual little fruits that are inside those bunches. What happens next is after it's harvested, it gets taken to a mill to be turned into product. In fact, many different kinds of products, cooking oil, biodiesel fuel, ingredients for cakes and cookies and candies, detergent, soap, skin lotions, and even nutraceuticals. There's no question about the fact that Malaysia and palm oil have gotten a bad reputation around the world. Accused of environmental insensitivity and as to palm oil specifically producing an unhealthy product. Years ago, manufacturers stopped using palm oil in packaged foods because it was deemed unhealthy. They replaced it with trans fats, considered a better alternative at the time, but now known to be even worse than palm oil. The focus of the criticism of palm oil goes beyond the environmental issue. It's very specific about palm oil's supposed negative health effects. If you look at the composition, um, there's something like 40% saturated, 40% monounsaturated and, and um, about 10-15% is uh, polyunsaturated. Now the criticism is on the saturated fats but the, actually the, there is the other components which are unsaturated but the, and even on the saturated fats I think there is uh, a lot of research and a lot of controversy about the role of saturated fats in human disease. So. Um, there's little evidence that the form of saturated fat that's found in uh, palm oil has leads to heart disease or, or um, you know, bad health. In recent years, the demonization of palm oil as a as a as a cause of heart disease has actually been debunked. So I think uh, increasingly uh, the benefits of palm oil has been recognized. So that's why the recent in recent years. Uh, the rising consumption of uh, palm oil has, has, we can attribute to the fact that it's not seen as an as a oil that uh, causes heart, heart disease. In fact, it actually contributes to a healthier lifestyle, particularly for the lesser countries with a lower income, where perhaps the oil, other oils are more expensive. Despite the apparent facts, the people in the palm oil business here in Malaysia are a little bit frustrated trying to overcome the decades-old assumption that palm oil is unhealthy. We know that it takes, it's, a, it's an uphill battle once the world has kind of been sold on the idea that palm oil is bad and then we come in from an angle trying to say that look this is the healthiest oil in the world. We do realize that it's not easy but that's the good word we want to spread. In this world of today, everybody wants to promote their own products and champion their own products. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think one thing must surface at the end of the day is honesty. Honestly, is it a bad oil? Honestly, does it, how does it compare in terms of its values, its nutritional values? When you pick an oil, mind you, you ingest it. So at the end of the day, you need to look at the nutritional values of that oil. What does it do to your heart? What does it do to you as in terms of weight, weight gain? This, that's something that, how does it reduce, and if you're a manufacturer, how does it improve the flavors of your product, the cooking time, the cost, for example, of, for producing the same product using different oils? So at the end of the day, the, the reason why some of this Thing called smearing that happens is because of the fact that everybody is trying to protect their own market. As you heard, the main complaint about the unhealthy aspects of palm oil is that it is full of saturated fats and that leads to heart disease. But the people here in Malaysia say, look at the science, it's just not true. Science uh, based facts are being uh, produced to counter all the allegations. And this is easy to counter because allegations are obviously not scientifically based. They are most of the time untrue. There are research papers that show on epidemiological uh, studies that in Europe, the countries with the highest consumption of saturated fat has the lowest cardiovascular disease. So it's not a direct link. I think there are a lot of other factors in play before you can say that that's actually 
saturated fats is the cause of uh, heart disease. I think people, uh, uh, scientists have, have point, pinpointed trans fats actually more harmful. So the palm oil people here in Malaysia think they're getting a bad rap based on old information. The world population at large has been uh, largely misinformed. Primarily because I think there was, uh, in the early 80s, particularly in the United States, there was all this care about tropical oils and what saturated fat in tropical oils could do and it could kill people and, and so on. Uh, we have done studies that showed that the cholesterol response of subject taking palm oil uh, is similar to them taking uh, olive oil. So palm oil and olive oil has the same cholesterol response profile. And this is basically it in the sense that uh, the West has uh, often uh, regarded olive oil as the uh, best oil to consume and our oil, palm oil, is equal to olive oil in terms of its cholesterol response but it is one-tenth the price of olive oil. So to me, palm oil is the best oil in the world both nutritionally as well as uh, economically. Despite what seems to be good evidence that palm oil does not have a saturated fats problem, the attacks continue. <clears throat> this is not something new. In the 80s, we have the, some association attacking palm oil is bad for health. That has been proved wrong because the, the palm oil, it does not trans fatty, uh, fatty acid issues. Now in the 90s and the, in the, uh, the century is the environment. And I think uh, its issue now is really to engage constructively with the NGOs. If you look at the data on coronary heart disease, for example, you will find populations like Malaysia, which predominantly uses palm, has got one of the lowest rate of heart disease in the world. I don't recollect the figure, but I think it's just less than 80 people per 100,000, if I'm not mistaken. So it shows that even from such statistics that over a period of time, there is evidence that the population that consumes a palm oil based diet has had no effect, particularly from a coronary heart perspective, which is what all the time it was told that, you know, tropical oils are bad, palm is bad, it, you know, you get a heart attack, but uh, the evidence is quite to the contrary. It is indeed ironic that a food product so vilified for being unhealthy is now being used in cutting-edge research as a possible cure for a variety of diseases. Companies like Caratino have found a way to exploit palm oil's healthy properties by developing a unique way of processing and refining the oil. Natural palm oil has got a lot of natural antioxidants. And these antioxidants in the conventional refining process get destroyed because uh, they're subjected to very high temperatures and under those conditions, all these heat labile phytonutrients are destroyed. What we have come up with in collaboration with the Malaysian Palm Oil Board is a technology that retains these phytonutrients. So we developed a process that's able to do all of what normal refining does, meaning it deacidifies the oil, it deodorizes the oil, makes the oil neutral in terms of taste, yet retains all these natural phytonutrients like carotenoids, tocopherols, stocotrienols, and so on. So despite all the negative claims about palm oil, it appears to have more healthy ingredients than competing oils. So where we come from is that our oil is not only a very balanced oil in terms of its fatty acid composition, it has got high monounsaturates, it's got some saturates which are neutral from all these studies, and it's got some polyunsaturates, so it's a good mix. And then it comes with all these natural antioxidants. So it's kind of a, uh, I'd say it's a three-in-one kind of a proposition. One, it's good functional oil that you can use for any oil application. Two, it comes with a bouquet of phytonutrients that you can't find in any other oil. Three, it also adds antioxidant value to any food product that you might produce in terms of its shelf life because it brings along uh, tocopherols and tocotrienols and all of these compounds. 
Those compounds are in fact quite important. While the carotenoids are a great antioxidant, palm oil is also rich in tocopherol and tocotrienol. Another palm oil company, Davos, based in nearby Singapore, is entirely devoted to developing health products using tocotrienol. Tocotrienol is a form of vitamin E. Under the category of vitamin E, there's basically two types of vitamin E. There is the tocopherol uh, vitamin E, and that's a common vitamin E. You see that in all the shops. You go to the drugstore, supermarket, you buy vitamin E, you look at the label, it says alpha tocopherol. And that is the common vitamin E, and it comes from soya bean. While the popular complaint about palm oil is that it raises cholesterol levels, some research shows that the tocotrienols in palm oil actually help lower cholesterol. This is actually one of the first uh, findings by researchers that, um, that tocotrienols could reduce cholesterol levels in, in the body. And it's, there are quite a number of published papers on that, and there are human uh, clinical trials that show that it can reduce uh, uh, cholesterol. It acts actually on the same pathway that statin uh, works, um, basically on uh, something called HMG-CoA reductase, which is a precursor to the production of cholesterol. So um, it has a cholesterol-lowering effect. Caratino's CEO, U.R. Unitan, is not just a corporate evangelist. He has an advanced degree in chemical engineering and has done extensive research on the good qualities of palm oil. So while the rap is that palm oil has lots of unhealthy ingredients, the latest research suggests just the opposite. But I think science has been evidence to the fact that over the last 15 to 20 years, there's been so much medical evidence about the neutrality of palmitic acid in palm, which is the predominant saturated fatty acid in palm. So if you look at a number of scientific studies, uh, I think through the Malaysian Palm Oil Board, and through a number of institutes and universities, even in the United States, Australia, in Europe, we've been able to demonstrate that palm olein, which is the liquid fraction of palm oil, behaves almost identical to olive oil in terms of its cholesterol uh, effect. So there have been studies that have been conducted comparing palm olein with olive oil and palm olein with rapeseed oil, where you can see the ratio of total cholesterol to HDL cholesterol, which is kind of the marker, you will find that studies have shown palm olein is no different from uh, olive oil or for that matter rapeseed oil. Dr. Arthur Ling is the CEO of Davos, which operates the world's largest tocotrienol manufacturing facility. Dr. Ling says palm oil's nutrients are good for more than just dietary supplements like antioxidants, vitamin A, and vitamin E. He says the nutrients in palm oil may actually help protect against and cure many diseases, since tocotrienol seems to have an anti-inflammatory effect. It's one of the properties that we are quite uh, interested in is its anti-inflammatory properties. Um, there are a lot of papers that show that it acts on the inflammatory pathway. So basically it comes down um, chronic inflammation. And in the inflammation area, I think it's um, uh, present in a lot of human conditions today. The origins of a lot of human conditions is uh, in, in chronic inflammation. So that's one of the areas that we are looking to. The tocotrienol in palm oil also has another positive effect, protecting the skin against ultraviolet radiation from the sun, thanks to its abundance of vitamin E. Um, actually, vitamin E in general, whether it's the tocopherol form or the tocotrienol form, is good for the skin because it's uh, anti-UV. It protects the skin against uh, UV radiation. And I think that comes actually from its uh, original purpose in, from, in, in, in nature, because you find uh, tocopherols or tocotrienols uh, mainly in plant seeds. It's there to protect the seeds against uh, um, oxidation as well as against UV radiation. So um, that is a very, um, let's say, uh, common application is, uh, is for skin care. But there's even more research supporting the health benefits of the tocotrienol in palm oil. It also seems to inhibit the growth of tumors. So at the basic level, it, um, it's like, like the common form, which it, it protects against uh, UV radiation. But we find the tocotrienol form, in addition to the 
protection against uh, UV. It also uh, has an anti-cancer effect. It's, it's, uh, it's able to act against the melanoma cancer cells, and that's one, one other uh, there's research going on in that. One particular clinical trial underway now with tocotrienol is looking into its ability to treat pancreatic cancer. It's one of the trials that we have been working on for the past uh, three years uh, is on pancreatic cancer. And we are co-funding with the NIH in the U uh, US, um, the Moffitt Cancer Center in Tampa, Florida. And they are doing a phase one study on the use of tocotrienols uh, in pancreatic cancer patients. There are other research trials underway examining the use of tocotrienol in treating prostate cancer. Um, one of the interesting uh, research papers that we have published was in the International Journal of Cancer, uh, where we showed that um, tocotrienols could in fact kill prostate cancer stem cells, that docetaxel, which is the common standard of care chemotherapy drug that's used for uh, prostate cancer could not kill. Okay? So these are quite unique cells which you find maybe one in 100,000 or one in a million in the cancer tumour. And, uh, and these stem cells are believed to be involved in the initiation and recurrence of cancer. And we showed that we extracted these uh, prostate cancer stem cells and showed that hylocotrinols could in fact kill it. The research on palm oil doesn't stop with cancer. Scientists are also exploring the preventive effect of palm oil on strokes. Um, there are two scientists, one uh, involved in stroke prevention from the uh, in US, uh, University of uh, Ohio. And he's, he's done a lot of preclinical work for 10 years to, sh to show that um, tocotrienols could um, alleviate the stroke condition. So he induces stroke in canine models and the size of the lesion is much, much smaller and the effects on the, uh, on the animal is much less when given tocotrienols. The Caratino company here in Malaysia is focusing on the abundance of vitamin A in palm oil, attacking what it calls the problem of hidden hunger. There are over 250 million children around the world that suffer from vitamin A deficiency. To address this problem, the Caratino company developed what they call a smart cookie. Now, we came up with this concept of providing a staple food, like a cookie. We call it the biscuit in this part of the world. We decided to make Caratino smart cookies, Caratino smart biscuits as we call it. The concept was we wanted to take out the hydrogenated fat which was otherwise used in the shortening which contains trans fatty acids with a nutritious shortening like carotenol which has zero trans fatty acids, is high in phytonutrients and then we did a clinical trial with these children, 400 of them and most of them were suffering from vitamin A deficiency. The clinical trials were done in South Africa and the results were astounding. In this study in South Africa we found that children were suffering from measles, from respiratory illnesses, all very symptomatic of vitamin A deficiency, scars on their skin. I mean, I was, I have visited this place in KwaZulu Natal, been to the school where these children were fed, and to me, it was a life-changing experience because I feel so passionate that why should children around the world, especially in poor countries, suffer like this when you have such a natural solution to the problem and one that is so cost-effective. Uar Unutan is not joking when he describes his passion for attacking the problem of vitamin A deficiency, which is a plague in many underdeveloped countries. I feel that this can change the world. Uh, unfortunately, this concept has really not got that popular with NGOs and aid agencies who should, in my opinion, have picked up such a nutritious product because for a fraction of the cost, you are improving the lives of a target population, particularly children, and I dare say women in the underdeveloped and developing worlds of Africa, South Asia, Latin America, where vitamin A deficiency is so prevalent. The fight over the health attributes of palm oil is just one skirmish in a bigger battle. Palm oil is inexpensive to grow and mostly grows in the tropical climate found in Southeast Asia. 
Its competitors are rapeseed oil, known popularly as canola oil, grown mostly in Europe, and soybean oil, grown mostly in the United States. There are billions of dollars at stake in this battle for the world's vegetable oil market. And some here in Malaysia say the competitors to palm oil can't win on the economics or the health argument, so they're trying to win on the environmental issue, charging that palm oil is unique in contributing to deforestation and habitat destruction. Kampung-kampung. Yang jelas ada beberapa hal yang menjadi punah. Sama nama dayaknya dan gerakan dayaknya, adatnya, segala macam akan punah. Initial uh, allegation or association of uh, palm uh, leading to uh, habitat loss is turned into a preemptive blockage of uh, palm oil in the trade to disallow it from growing too fast or growing big, out competing the local uh, oil seeds, which suits the farmers, suits the government because they don't have to then uh, provide price supports for their agricultural policy in the EU and the US. There is some truth in, in it because um, whether it's it's a uh, rapeseed or whether it's uh, soya or whether it's uh, palm oil it's a business and and i guess in business uh, people would try to to be the top dog to 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 get the best profits out of it um, but we we should be taking into account uh, that it is not good business to proceed with business as usual and so irrespective of what people say, I think uh, the, the industry has an obligation and a responsibility uh, to, to make their industry a more sustainable one, a more environment friendly one. But as in the health argument against palm oil, the facts get in the way. Contrary to the complaints, palm oil actually saves land from deforestation. Palm oil being the most uh, productive oils, uh, overall from a global perspective, it can help to reduce the pressure on other oil crops. For, for example, if you look at uh, soybean, it accounts for more than 90 billion hectares in the globally, see, whereas palm oil is only 10 billion. So from a land use perspective, uh, globally, I think it would be more efficient to have a larger acreage of palm oil. See. But nevertheless, uh, we do see the need to strike a balance so that uh, globally, uh, the, the planet is on a sustainable basis. If you were to plant soybean and trade and produce soybean oil like the rest of the world uh, are doing, uh, we would require not the same amount as the oil palm land area, but something like twice the area of our country. Uh, where do we live if every piece of land is to be planted with soybean just to produce the same amount of oil. So what I'm saying is palm oil is the right crop, uh, happens to be so competitive and this may have attracted a lot of uh, competitors trying to deny palm oil uh, participation in the world trade. So this to us is unfortunate because what is to us, a very beneficial and competitive oil uh, enabling us to help feed the world is being denied its proper place in uh, trade uh, simply because of this antagonistic uh, approach towards palm, uh, trying to make all these allegations in, in, in a way uh, denying its uh, effective role in society. Well, on the surface, there appears to be this environmental battle between the NGOs and the palm oil business. In fact, in recent years, there has been increasing cooperation and compromise between the two sides. Genuinely, I believe that uh, uh, conservation uh, and palm oil are not, you know, are not at odds. It's not something that you can, uh, you can, uh, that you have to sacrifice conservation for palm oil, because. Uh, I give an example. I can give an example of a of a zoo that is working as an advisor to a palm oil uh, company. 
It was the Copenhagen Zoo which advised a palm oil company on how to use their newly acquired land for planting, and the company agreed to use only 60% of the land for oil palm trees and to preserve 40% of the land for conservation. The big companies, of course, become very uh, uh, easy uh, targets for criticism, but, uh, but the, through over the years, you know, they have been, in fact, quite early uh, to be to be the first to work with WWF, for example, you know, and uh, also very and working with various uh, zoos and NGOs on conservation work. So the so they have not been. Uh, uh, in fact, they are not reluctant partners. In fact, they are willing partners to uh, conservation work and sustainability uh, issues in in Malaysia, especially in the palm oil palm, palm oil industry. And it helps, I think, because uh, it helps that the, the price of palm oil is high, you know, that uh, there is reserves and uh, money that they have, which they can use for, for such, uh, such efforts. We are partners with various NGOs, people like PACOS, people like LIB. We, we want to engage with everyone. I like to say that we want to have plenty of lovers, plenty of partners. Let everybody be our friends. And they're part of the stakeholders. And if they have anything of grievance, then there is the forum for them to address that. So there is a happy result at the end of it all. If people learn to work together, and I think this is the, 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 base, the message that I think uh, we, want to, we want to convey, that uh, uh, it is, uh, it is, it is uh, simply that, you know, come down, work with us, uh, and we think. Uh, that it, 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 the, the result will satisfy everybody. There's still much more to this debate over palm oil. Join us next week when we explore the subject of biomass, a new green idea, and a new range of products derived from the oil palm tree and a way to turn waste into wealth. Reporting from Malaysia, I'm Stuart Shafay.